time, piece by piece. Number 15. A Love Letter Apart from being one of the most famous tragedies known to man, Titanic has one of the greatest love stories that's associated with it, all thanks to the movie. Even though there's no concrete evidence regarding Jack's existence as he won the ticket as a prize, so there were no records of him boarding the ship and his and Rose's love story remains ever so tragic. And while we can't revel in the reality of this story, you might be interested to know that love was on board the Titanic. A love letter was found in the ancient artifacts that were recovered almost 70 years after the accident. A Titanic cabin attendant named Richard Geddes penned the letter to his wife. The letter was written on the original Titanic stationery, and it even had its original Starline envelope when it was found. In addition to the declarations of love, the letter also contained information that only the passengers on the ship would know. In the letter, Richard recounted to his wife a near collision that the Titanic had with the SS City of New York. On April the 10th, just a few days before its collision with the iceberg, the luxury liner almost escaped death and destruction by a hair's breadth. The incident was brought about due to the pull of the ship's propellers tearing apart the ropes of the iron liner. This would bring the ship extremely close to crashing. The collision was averted by the intervention of Captain Smith, who used a tugboat to pull his boat away. Concluding this letter, Richard mentions to his wife how people on board saw this near miss as a bad omen. Number 14. A Pocket Watch an antique rusty pocket watch would be recovered from a passenger who had died on the Titanic. The watch belonged to Sinai Kantor, a Russian Jewish immigrant that was aboard the Titanic on that fateful day. The artifact was initially recovered from his body after he was pulled from the icy waters by a recovery operation following the ship's sinking on April 15th. The watch does have a backstory that's worthy of Jack and Rose. Sinai, who was then 34, was traveling on the Titanic with his wife Miriam. The pair were from Russia and boarded the ship with second-class passenger tickets. They had hoped to begin a new life together in America, aiming to study medicine and dentistry once they had settled down in New York City. Sinai was a furrier and planned to sell trunks of furs to find their dreams of a larger-than-life American way. Unfortunately, fate had other plans for them. The married couple would never get a chance to begin their new life together, and as a part of the Women and Children First protocol, Miriam made it safely onto a lifeboat, but Sinai refused to access the boat and, along with thousands of others, was forced into the frigid waters once the ship had sank. His body would later be recovered from the icy water, and this is one of the many stories from the boat that reminds us of the lives involved and the lost in the tragedy. After several days in the cold seawater, the Swiss-made watch is in not perfect shape. The hands have entirely worn away, the dial was stained, and the movement was rusted and the silver coating was almost completely eroded. Despite being in this condition, the watch actually sold for $57,500 at auction, as it helped to keep the story of the Titanic captivating for more than a century. Number 13. The Violin Now, if you've watched James Cameron's Titanic, you'll surely remember the band playing as the ship went down. But did you know that it actually happened? Yes, it's a real story, and one of the many things that were recovered from the sunken ship was the violin that had played while it was going into the water. After the ship hit the iceberg, an eight-piece band would be commissioned to play music to the loading of the lifeboats to calm the frigid and frightened passengers. Many eyewitnesses would later report that the musicians continued to play until their last breaths, and none of them made it out of the tragedy alive. The most heartbreaking part of the story, perhaps, is that the band leader, Wallace Hartley, his body was pulled from the water just a few days after the Titanic sank, and his violin case was still attached to his back, with one of the rescuers taking it as a souvenir. His body would be brought to England and buried following a funeral procession that brought tens of thousands of people out of their homes to pay their last respects. The bag that contained the violin was found several years after the sinking, Upon investigation, it would be found that the violin belonged to Wallace Hartley. The band members were not part of the ship's crew and had every right to leave and save their own lives, so why didn't they? Well, these musicians had dedicated their final hours to calming the minds and hearts of thousands of passengers that were destined to die on the ship. The ship's chaos was sadly tragic, with the band playing the song, Nearer My God to Thee, as the ship sank to the ocean's depths. Wallace's violin would be recovered and returned to his former fiancée Maria, 
and the violin went on to be purchased by a British collector for an astonishing £1.7 million and to this day remains one of the most expensive pieces of Titanic memorabilia to ever be sold. The emotions that she must have gone through after hearing the story should be overwhelming to even imagine. The bravery and resilience of Wallace and his band will forever be entrenched in the hearts of the survivors as well as the rest of the world. Number 12. The Big Piece Nicknamed The Big Piece, a large section of the Titanic's hull would be rescued from the ocean's depths. But why is a massive chunk of a sunken ship such a big deal? The Big Piece weighs a whopping 15 tons and is a 13 by 30 foot section of the hull. It would first be spotted in 1994 and after a 1996 salvage operation failed when a cable holding the piece had snapped, it was successfully recovered in 1998. This piece of the hull is definitely the largest Titanic artifact ever recovered. Upon closer inspection, it would be found that the piece came from the ship's starboard side, which only proved that the steamer ultimately fell victim to the sheer elemental forces of nature. The portholes still contain their glass, and the big piece remains on display to this day. Standing next to it feels like you're standing next to the Titanic itself. People who visited the exhibitions were in awe of its presence. Many people were moved to tears and some even claimed that they experienced a tingling when they touched it. Many people feel a greater connection to the Titanic when they look at this enormous piece of the hull. By doing so, the tale becomes more than just a myth. One may observe its impact on many exhibition visitors sitting in the observation rooms. Number 11. The Bell On April 14th of 1912, around 11.40 p.m., the Titanic is riding the waves just as majestic as ever. The ship's lookout spots a giant shimmering structure, and the man in the crow's nest discovers a massive fleet of icebergs and rings the alarm bell three times to alert the staff and passengers of their impending doom. Then many decades later, in 1987, the iconic bell would be recovered, and now resides in the Titanic Museum. Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, the ship's lookouts, thankfully survived the tragedy and went on to tell their perspective of how things went down. What's actually shocking is that they revealed that they could have spotted the iceberg sooner had they been given a pair of binoculars to assist with their jobs. When asked how much sooner, Frederick replied, enough to get out of the way. After his wife had died, Frederick took his own life on January the 10th of 1965. It can be hard to understand how much the incident affected the lives of everyone who was on board. Just thinking about how everyone on the boat felt after the bell was rung three times is impossible to comprehend. Number 10. Vials of Perfume On a salvage mission in the year 2000, a leather pouch would be recovered. Salvage expert Dick Barton told ABC News that they could not figure out what they were looking at until they had hit the surface. When they opened up the pouch, something very interesting happened. Opening up the pouch filled the lab with Edwardian perfume. So apparently the pouch had contained 62 small vials of perfume samples that belonged to a 47-year-old perfume maker known as Adolf Saffield, a first-class passenger from Manchester. Saffield fled the ship but left his leather pouch behind to be discovered years later. Several other pouches would be recovered that all had his name on them. And guess what they contained? Well, all the pouches included samples of perfume. After recovering the ship's damages, Saffield's scents were given a second life. The perfume would be broken down into its component chemicals in order to recreate the scent and led to a perfume that's now called Legacy 1912. And if you're wondering what it smells like, well, they say that it smells like delicate lemon and neuralis, blushing rose, and warm sheer amber. The packaging design would be inspired by a door brought up from the wreck. Number 9. An Alligator Purse One of the luxuries of the Titanic was an alligator pocketbook that belonged to a British hat maker by the name of Marion Meanwell. Meanwell, who was relocating to the United States to live with her daughter and grandchildren, was not planning to actually board the Titanic, but nevertheless, after the other ship that she was scheduled to board on was out of service, she bought a third-class ticket. Amongst the items in her bag would be her marriage certificate, a canary receipt proving a shipment to a retired relative, and a letter from a previous landlord attesting to her paying payments. The fact that the papers were in her pocketbook, which protected the contents from the sea and allowed them to survive, and according to conservators, 
The thickness and quality of the alligator skin are incomparable to anything you would find today. Making long-lasting items that would withstand the test of time was the general mindset in those days, but sadly, Meanwell perished with the Titanic. One just has to wonder what her life would have been like had she been able to board her original ship and make it to America. Number 8. A Menu of the Ship's Last Meal have you ever wondered what was on the menu of the biggest luxury ship in the world? Well, you're about to find out. People worldwide are still fascinated by the Titanic 104 years after it sank, not only because of the giant scale of the tragedy, but the Titanic's tale is one of old world valor and nobility. Still though, it's a tale of old world class differences. Consider the first, second, and third class passengers eating menus. The comprehensive list of options included several courses described in a menu in the Titanic's wreck. First-class passengers had access to a whole host of different kinds of delicacies, and even though the second-class menus were slightly less fancy, they still had delicious dishes. These would include roasted turkey with cranberry sauce, spring lamb with mint sauce, and baked haddock in the sharp sauce. There was also plum pudding and wine jelly. On the other side, though, the third-class menu seemed more like slop for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Anyone up for some cooked potatoes and rice soup? The important thing to remember is that the Titanic was thought to have the best restaurant on board, and this example does support that claim. For one lunch, over 40 different options for meals were actually available, and that's just in one meal of the day. Just for the first class, though, and it sounds crazy to think about. Number 7. Bronze Cherub A bronze cherub would be part of the Titanic, the Artifact Exhibition, formerly shown at the Luxor Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. The cherub is a component of a lamp that was left by the staircase that connected sea deck to the promenade deck. Although they could be seen all throughout the Titanic, cherub statues were most adorned along the five-level grand staircase and which one specifically is up for question? According to CNN, one opinion is that it originated from the higher level of the Grand Staircase in first class because it's smaller than the cherubs on the main staircase landings. The statue's torch and left foot, which may have been lost when it was yanked from its place, is missing, and with the release of James Cameron's record-breaking box office hit Titanic, this cherub gained notoriety. It was the perfect romantic background character as Jack courted Rose on the Grand Staircase. Some mistake this big cherub for a smaller one that's been recovered from the ocean floor. What's terrifying about this religious iconography is that it's being used as a literal center of such an enormous tragedy. Cherubs are usually known as the bearers of the throne or creatures who attend to God, and some people take this religious figure to have a deeper meaning. Before the Titanic had set sail, it was often claimed that not even God was capable of sinking the boat, However, some religious people saw grave blasphemy in these claims and believed that God would not let this go unpunished. Many people would even be convinced that it was actually as much human pride that was the reason behind the sinking of the Titanic as it was God's divine wrath. Was the cherub surviving all these years in the wreckage and eventually being found a religious message? Nobody can say for sure. Number 6. Titanic Radio now, before you say anything, let me just be clear on this. The radio is a piece of the ship that has not yet been recovered. However, it still deserves an honorable mention on this list owing to its contents and importance along with implications. Whether or not to retrieve the radio has been the focus of a very long ongoing debate. Known in 1912 as the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Machine, this radio aboard the ship sent distress calls to nearby ships when disaster would be spotted. This would save the lives of around 700 people who could get on the lifeboats and be rescued. Supporters of the excavation would argue that it's extremely important to salvage it before it's lost forever. Underwater footage shows that the machine is covered in rust and may soon become undiscoverable if action is not taken. However, the bodies of many of the people who perished on the ship have never been recovered, and the debate is because there might still be remains of the victims down there. Lawyers have been arguing against the retrieval of the radio as the dive plan did not include the prospect of there being human remains. However, and moreover, to retrieve the radio, they would need to cut into the ship's radio compartment, and that's something that's strongly opposed by preservation advocates. It's uncertain whether the radio will ever be recovered and brought to the surface in the near future, but one thing is for sure, it will be very chilling to hear the voices of the now-perished 
and take a peek into what went down on that fateful day. Number 5. A Shoe A man's shoe is one of the rarest to be shown of the items that were recovered from the Titanic because of its deplorable condition. At first glance, it may seem like a torn and worn out shoe, but if you look more closely, you'll uncover a lot more about it. This poorly preserved men's leather shoe only consists of the welt, top cap, and partial quarter with the insole, and looking at the man's shoe reminds you of the very real people who were involved in such a colossal disaster. It's easy to overlook the impact that the event has had on each person aboard the giant steamer, and to get lost in numbers and statistics, and just the magnitude of it all. But it's equally terrifying to think about how the thousands of people felt in those long and painful moments leading up to their death and destruction of one of the world's largest structures, and it reminds us of the countless people who had hoped to begin a new life in America, but never made it to the shores of the free world to start their new way. The fragile condition of the ship just adds to the feeling of the unrelenting nature of the ocean and the gigantic waves that the giant ship fell victim to. Number 4. Sheet Music Played by the Band The band's sheet music was miraculously retrieved from the North Atlantic. Two pieces of music, on Mobile Bay from circa 1910, and Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, from the Broadway show Madame Cherie, have been found amongst the wreckage. The second item belongs to Howard Irwin, who was on a Friends Round the World trip, and the Titanic's inaugural voyage was to be the last leg of their journey. Irwin, on the other hand, did not make it on board. He may have been robbed just before the Titanic had sailed, but both his buddy and his goods made it on the ship. Henry Sudahall Jr., Irwin's companion, tragically perished in the shipwreck. Knowing the kind of music being played on the ship takes us one step closer to imagining what it must have been like aboard the Titanic. Even though the luxurious descriptions sound amazing, what follows is one of the biggest tragedies that the world has seen to date. Finding out more and more details about the journey really just makes the tragedy seem so much more real and bigger than one could have ever imagined. Number 3. The Telegraph Unlike the radio machine that has not yet been recovered, the engine telegraph was amongst the ship's machinery that made it back to land. This artifact would be found in 1987, and the machine was used to relay commands to the engine room. It was used to communicate with all of the crew on board and connected them to the engine room, and this telegraph was likely the device that was used to communicate between members of the crew when the iceberg was spotted and the chaos began. It's believed that this played a central role in the collision of the iceberg, however, while it's still unclear what exact orders were being given from the bridge to the engine room, and vice versa, one thing that has been agreed upon is that the Titanic slowed down after the collision. This means that whatever orders were being relayed took too long to be received. The ship struck the iceberg 37 seconds after it had been spotted, and we all know what happened next. Number 2. The Hat Another one from the collection of personal belongings retrieved from the wreck is a bowler hat. This bowler hat would be recovered in 1993 and is still in surprisingly good shape, given that it was discovered surrounded by wreckage on the ocean floor. Little is known about the hat's owner, but as hats were a fairly popular male adornment of the time, any of the hundreds of men who were on board could have worn it. It's unclear who the hat belonged to, but the tragedy of all the people on the ship that night still remains the same. Number 1. Keys Numerous lives would be saved thanks to this unique set of keys. Samuel Hemming, a crew member, used them to retrieve the lifeboat lanterns that had been used to help individuals leave the ship with illumination. The lanterns were kept in a room below deck, so Hemming had to take a life-threatening danger into his own hands to get them. Hemming was saved from the sinking ship and lived the rest of his life with the three keys in his possession. Before being purchased by a private collector, they were passed down through the generations, and it's not only these keys that have been put up for auction. In 2016, a Titanic locker key would sell at auction for $100,000. It's amazing to see parts of the stories that we've been hearing all of our lives and have watched in the movie, but it all begins to feel too real and too close to home. Real people, more than 1,500 lives, were lost in one night. Unsuspecting visitors out at sea caught the cruel wrath of nature. That's it for today, my friends. I hope that you've enjoyed watching the video. Comment down below which artifact gave you goosebumps watching. Share it with your friends and subscribe for more videos like this one in the future.